Hi, now in this video, we are going to talk about arrays in solidity. So if we talk about arrays in solidity, there are basically two types of arrays. First one, your fixed array. Second one, your dynamic size array. And in this video, we will talk about fixed array. And in the next video, we will talk about dynamic size array. So what are fixed size array? So as we all know that array are collection of homogeneous elements. So if we are having array of integers, then we will have only integer elements inside that array. If we are going to create a string type array, then we will have only string elements inside that array. And what do I mean by fixed array? And what do I mean by fixed size array? Fixed size arrays are those arrays which has a fixed size at compile time. In solidity, this is how we declare a fixed size array. First of all, the data type. So we are using uint here. Then the number of elements that we want inside this ARR array and then public and this ARR variable. So if you are writing uint5 public ARR, then in memory, something like this is happening. Since you are not initializing this array, by default, all the array elements will be zero because this is of uint type array, right? So all the elements at index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 will be zero. Now let's say if you are declaring an array, by initializing it with 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, then in memory, it will be like this, where at zeroth index, you will have 10, at first index, 20, at second index, 30, and at third index, 40, and so on. Now let us go to our Remix ID in order to understand the concept of arrays in a much more better way. So here, in order to declare an array, I will first of all write uint because we are going to declare an integer type array. Then inside this, we will have the number of elements that we want inside our array, then public and then the variable name. So let me show you that by default, this array will be empty means empty by what do I mean by empty means by default, it will be having zero, right? Since it is of uint type. So let me deploy this. And let me check the zeroth index. So you can see it is zero. Let me check the third index. So again, it is zero, right? Now let's say if I want to initialize this array with let's say 10, 20 and 30, something like this, 40 and 50. Now in this case, if you will deploy this again, we will check at zeroth index, it is having 10 at uh, fifth, not actually fifth, only fourth, right? Because this is a five elements array. So we will have only fourth index, zero, one, two, three, and four. So at fourth index, we have 50. Okay. Now let us see how we can insert an element using a function inside this array. So in, to insert an element inside this array, we have to write function. Okay. Then let's say this uint item. Okay. I forgot one thing, the name of the function. Let's say this, the name of this function is insert. And then I will make this public, then curly braces. And now let's say I want to uh, I can also pass one more thing, right? That is the index value. Okay. And let's say at index at a particular index, I want this item value. So I can insert that item value here. Okay. In this way, I can choose whatever index I want, and then I can insert that particular element inside that index. And it would be better, right? If we will have the index first and then the item at this position, right? So just to make it more user friendly. Now let's say I want to return some element. In that case, I will write return ARR. Okay. And let's say I want to return a particular index. So uint index again, then public, then returns, and then uint because the array element is of uint type. So ARR, okay, first of all, return and then ARR index. Okay. And yes, definitely, since we are only reading from the state variable because ARR is a state variable, right? So we will have this view keyword. And in this, since we were changing the state variable, this state array, so that's why we never used any keyword view or pure here. Okay. So by this, we can insert an element into array or return an element from an array. So let me deploy this so that I can make you understand. So at zeroth index currently, you will see it is having 10, right? So let's say I want at the zeroth index, I want 100. So I will insert it. 
so the transaction is successful if i will again call you can clearly see that arr0 is 100 and same we can do from this return array function right in case solity has already created a return type function for this arr variable because this is a public state variable right so that's why we are able to call this arr0 arr1 using this state variable but definitely if you will not make this public then you need this return arr function so let me check that as well so zero uh, let's say fourth and 50 right so this is how we can insert and return an element from an array but let's say i want to return this entire array okay because currently we are only returning a specific element right but let's say i want to return the entire array in that case what i will do in that case i will do return uh, all elements something like this okay so this is just a function all elements and then i will make it public then since we are going to view the state variable then view then returns now here comes the tricky part and let me tell you what that tricky part is but before that let me do return arr now in this returns what we are going to have in this return in this return since we are returning this entire array okay it should be rr since we are returning this entire array right so in this we have to have uint first of all because we are returning an array of uint type again since we are returning this entire array and this entire array is having around five elements right so it is having five elements so we need to mention that as well so like this and then if you will see that uh, i i already have written this uint5 like this right still there is an error so what is that error so it is saying that data location must be memory or call data for return parameter in function but none was given so it is saying that we need to use this memory keyword okay this memory keyword in order to make this function work now the question arises why why we have to return this memory keyword what is the utility of writing this memory keyword here since we talked about reference data type right and we have seen that arrays are also reference data type and these reference data type are actually referencing by default the storage area so they are referencing by default the storage area what do i mean by that it means that when we are writing this arr variable at contract level so this arr is actually getting stored in the storage area right we have talked about this while we were while we talked about the uh, state variables right that state variables get stored at contract storage right now since you are using this reference data type this array inside this function so you need to tell to this solidity compiler that you are using a reference data type inside a function and for that you need to mention this memory keyword so whenever you are going to use any kind of reference data type in a function you have to use this memory keyword and this will make more sense when we will talk about other reference data types as well for now just take my word and whenever you are returning any kind of reference data type use this memory keyword but again i will as i said we will talk about this reference data type more in our upcoming session so as we will progress through different different data types let's say string mapping then we will get to learn much more about this reference data type for now remember whenever you are returning an array and since this array is a reference data type you have to use this memory keyword inside this function and another important thing is that you cannot use this memory keyword at contract level because memory keyword is actually used for the functions only if you remember the definition that we discussed in the reference data type that memory keyword are actually related to your external function call so you cannot use them at contract level so if you will try to do this you will see that it will throw you an error that expected identifier but got memory so you cannot use memory keyword inside this contract level means at the contract level you can use memory keyword inside this function but not at contract level and we will see how to use memory keyword inside this function as well in our upcoming videos for now let us deploy this and in this if you will see we have this return all elements when i will call this you can see that it has returned all the array elements 10 20 30 40 50 okay so this is how we perform operations on a fixed size array i hope you enjoyed this video 
meet you soon in the next video if you have liked this video please click on that like button if you are new to this channel please subscribe to this channel because i am regularly going to upload new blockchain courses on this channel so meet you soon in the next video till then take care bye bye and do not forget if you have any doubts please comment below okay